Welcome back after the short break and we'll continue with our next bracket, adoption of crypto assets by banks and asset managers. And as our first speaker, I can welcome Matthias Imbach. Matthias, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. Then the stage is yours. Have fun, enjoy. Okay, great. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, hi everyone. Great pleasure to, to be here um, and uh, to share a few thoughts with you. I was asked to, uh, to talk uh, in particular about uh, tokenization and maybe share a, a few reflections on, on, on what we see right now or believe are some of the success factors as uh, to, to tokenize assets uh, in a truly institutional grade, bank grade manner. Uh, before getting straight into it, I think we have about 15, 20 minutes just to give you a very quick who we are so that you know who you're interacting with. Um, Signum is a digital asset technology group with a banking license in Switzerland and uh, asset management license in Singapore, fully focused on empowering institutional and qualified private investors to and banks to invest in the digital asset economy with complete trust. And for that, we have uh, created basically a fully licensed regular, regulatory compliant platform to co which captures the entire value chain across accounts and custody, brokerage, asset management, lending, and today's focus, tokenization. Now, um, just for, for those of you who may not have kind of uh, always followed the different types of, of, of tokens that we see in the market so, so closely, just a, a quick high level um, uh, categorization, how digital assets can be, can be categorized. First, you have all the tokens that we can, one can call counterparty less tokens, fully decentralized networks such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. You can't call a Bitcoin company. These will be the native protocol tokens. And then, and this is today's focus, you have the, the um, asset tokens and payment tokens, which form a right against the counterparty in terms of payment tokens within the Signum ecosystem, for example, we've created a digital Swiss franc, which helps us on the settlement for true delivery versus payment of asset tokens, which in turn are digital representations of securities such as shares, bonds, um, etc. I've created or we've, I've used this slide about six or even longer, six months ago or even longer. And I just uh, realized as I was preparing for, for this uh, short presentation here today, whether it's still valid and uh, a little bit shockingly, it still seems, at least to me, um, tokenization, we, one has been talking about it for quite a while, uh, high expectations, but the true potential really still has to be, has to be found. Um, and uh, maybe why is that the case? I mean, if you look at, at the market and how it has developed, we've seen countless press marketing messages, uh, which would go along the lines of, we have tokenized X, Y, Z, or we will be partnering with to do that and this. But if we then really go one level deeper and analyze how many real production level projects with real value, with a real value proposition for investors and or the issuer are out there, then it is at this stage quite, um, let's say, not, not so much going on. Why this development? I mean, first, of course, there was lots of excitement, which was very much formed around the technology, which indeed is as perfectly suited to, to innovate and upgrade today's financial market infrastructure. But this has led to a situation where actually the technical setup of, of tokenizing smart contracts and creating digital representations of securities per se is mastered today. It's easy, it's, it's possible to do it. Many um, innovative and smart teams have worked and cracked practice. This is, however, just the tip of the iceberg. When you really look at it, what needs to happen for this to, to make sense, then um, it is required to have an integrated end-to-end -end thought through solution. And what you'll find is that even in this process, the actual technical um, part is maybe 20% or so of the challenge. The far larger challenge or, or process that needs to be taken into account is making sure that the legal setups, the regulatory setup, the compliance process the, in the ba for banks, the integration of this new infrastructure in, in, in sometimes still a bit more legacy and traditional operational processes, that is where really what is the crux and which usually also is where then the systems break or rather the process breaks and which leads to a situation where the, the value add may at times be limited. 
So that already informs kind of some of the success, what a success factor is uh, for, for bank rate tokenization, namely to be that for it to be fully integrated. And I'll, I'll come to that in a second. However, when I am a bit critical about kind of the current stage of where we are at, that I don't want by any means I don't want by any means say that there's uh, not significant potential. On the contrary, we are convinced and have been investing for the last three years and continue to significantly in in, in creating a financial infrastructure, financial market infrastructure, which uh, will, in our view, significantly disrupt how. Anything of value is transferred between parties and which is much more efficient and with real value proposi proposition for both issuers and investors. But what does it take uh, taking uh, today's view, today's market uh, situation? Uh, what is really driving real value uh, for bank grade tokenization given the market infrastructure as we have it today? And I've summarized five, uh, five points here, which I'll try to back up uh, a little bit. One is think that it's important to think through the end-to-end -end process from a customer perspective. The biggest value add is really, um, it really happens if uh, a, a, an issuer can not only just issue a token and then has to figure out custody or how to distribute it to clients. This is at this stage, um, difficult for, for issuers to orchestrate. So it's easier for them to work with partners that can offer this end to end because the whole value chain and the ecosystem around it, including service providers that can, can do the different uh, processes are not yet in, in, in truly in place. And hence, uh, we believe as an issuer or as, a, in, as an infrastructure provider in the space, for example, Signum, it's per, a prerequisite for success is to be able to offer it end to end. What we've done for this purpose is really we've built Designate, which covers the entire value chain uh, from, from the legal regulatory framework, thinking through the product features, the technical issuance, then the advisory, partially distribution, and also the subscription management, fully digital. You can subscribe to a digital share on our platform in three clicks, and it work, works and is smooth. For that purpose, and I'll come to that, we focus on four investment verticals where we feel there's true value add for both issuers and investors. But it doesn't stop there. Of course, then you need the infrastructure to trade it, to, se to settle the tones, and of course, the, the, the cost of the infrastructure for it to, make, for it to be truly end-to-end. Sinex here is an open trading facility um, where these tokens can be exchanged in a fully compliant and regulatory compliant manner. Also, um, for to not have a technological break, uh, it's it's key to also have in the ecosystem of a bank grade tokenization stack a delivery versus payment leg on the fiat side. In our case, we've uh, launched uh, last year in March the digital Swiss franc token, which allows us true delivery versus payment. Second. Uh, success factor from our perspective is that, yes, it sounds obvious, but so now some, sometimes it, it still isn't that no tokenization for the sake of tokenization. Uh, if you offer token or if one offers tokenization or if one as an issuer intends to potentially tokenize, so important to really think through whether there is actually a, an additional value proposition vis-a-vis -vis other avenues to, for example, um, issue uh, capital or, or, or fundraise. That the process of tokenization itself doesn't make an underlying asset attractive per se. Ultimately, uh, at least on, on, on credible platforms with credible partners, it ultimately boils down to create value for investors for it to be uh, uh, an attractive investment proposal. And in our case, we have a very solid process in terms of uh, an approval pro process to, to analyze which tokens make sense on a platform and which don't. As mentioned before, for this uh, uh, for this process, we are we are focusing on 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 four investment verticals: an interest uh, across venture capital, mid cap, real estate, and art and collectibles. And interestingly, the two latter ones, real estate and art collectibles, are the ones where we get the most feedback because and and, and, and traction right now because it kind of is so obvious that if suddenly we can create we can bring in more emotions into an investment opportunity such as tokenizing a piece of art which is uh, many million dollars worth and you can uh, kind of gain access to a fractional ownership to such a piece you can take your son or daughter uh, go to wherever the, the the piece is stored and and, and customized and say look 
we own part of it. I've always believed in this uh, artist now. Uh, we, we own part of it. And maybe in the future, we can even buy more tokens and then have it physically delivered if we have the financial means to it and it makes sense. Same applies to real estate, kind of that story of making unbankable assets more bankable and with that um, also more easily transferable. There's uh, from a from a potential um, potential positive um, uh, effects from tokenization. There's many faults, but they still, as we're in early stage of it, they still have to be proven out. We've categorized them in four categories here: access to capital markets. Yes, if done well and end to end, there it is a way of cheaper to get cheaper access to capital through the digit, digitized issuance process. No sending around of of investment materials and Excel files for cap table and due diligence. It can all be done on one platform, including digital signature, including the sub subscription process, fully digitized. Then uh, also it reduces transfer of ownership, uh, particularly given the new DLT law in Switzerland, where, for example, uh, the, the blockchain replaces the written form requirements. And of course, then through that creates um, process efficiencies. The corporate housekeeping is easier. The, the most basic uh, element here is to, to say that cap tables are always up to date automatically. It's one of the core functionalities and characteristics of the blockchain that um, every, every transaction is immutably captured on the ledger. And then portfolio diversification, something that is emerging, that it's just a, another way of diversifying someone's assets into previously hardly investable assets. Moving on to the third success factors that we clearly have identified. One is, which is that regulation and trust. There is no giving in to short cross, shortcuts advisable. Uh, well, you know, we, we are strong believers in, in that the, the next level of adoption of towards digital assets, that's true for both cryptocurrencies as well as uh, asset tokenization is really to bring in trust. You may recall how I've introduced Signum. We have centered this as part of, or as, as a core of our value pr pr proposition to empower investors to invest in this as emerging asset class with complete trust. And hence also the regulatory frameworks and to the, 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 to in our case, for example, not allowing any single transaction on our platform with prior to being a bank, which we are since 2019, which was a co conscious decision to not be exposed subject to uh, any legacy issues, which could happen even in five years in retrospect. And this is a famous saying, right? If you think that compliance is expensive, try non-compliance. And I think for both uh, investors, issuers, and service providers, it's just always key when it comes to choosing whom to partner with and, and what to focus on to, to, to try to ignore the noise, which sometimes is there, particularly during hype cycles, and really see through it and think long-term. Uh, invest in the short-term sometimes to get it right uh, mid to long-term. The last two... I've, I've, I've bucketed in, in, in the same, which is uh, basically just the realization and the acceptance that, that what is happening here is, 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 is still pioneering, right? It's at the same time building tech and also building market. We are today not living in a world where tokenization is uh, um, paramount and everywhere. I've, I've started the, this presentation with this uh, notion. Um, it's just important to acknowledge that, that we're still in the infancy of this development and we have an opportunity to, to leverage, though, the, a great technology to build a new market, to educate um, those, the market participant and particularly position ourselves as, as first, as infrastructure provider, as, as pioneers, as, as, as those investing early and then with the ambition to capture more of the market later on as there is exponential growth from an issuer's perspective to uh, to position yourself as innovative as, as tech savvy as as future proof and ready and as investors to diversify your portfolio in a new and emerging asset class and to be ahead of the of the curse of course of the curve of course as of course associated uh, with risk as well what uh, also taking the angle of uh, infrastructure provider or service providers is important in this process as we're early is also to always question how 
today's processes are are are, are managed uh, or, or leveraging this new technology if we just start rebuilding capital market infrastructure processes as we've done it for the last 20 plus years then we're doing something wrong it's about using this technology the dlt technology and to try where it makes sense to reshape the process to make it more efficient and with that also um um, less costly for for all the market participants. This is basically the principle uh, of of accepting that future has heritage. That accepting that certain things that have that have been done so far make sense. For example, following anti money laundering rules, transaction monitoring processes, risk considerations, regulatory fri- frameworks. At the same time, redoing or reshaping the processes to be future ready. And then, last but not least, and this is sometimes. Uh, a little bit. Uh, I don't want to contentious, but some contentious. But some people may have a hard time uh, understanding what, 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 why I'm, I'm, I'm saying this. Is I, I'm convinced that understanding cryptocurrencies and what it takes to custodize them, to trade them, to even analyze and value them, and to integrate them in, in processes, particularly for service providers and banks, uh, etc., is just a prerequisite for successful tokenization efforts. It's ultimately the technology which has brought out this this opportunity and many of the things that you have to think through if you want to provide tokenization setups, infrastructure, or as an issuer um, to use it, is just to understand what basically what cryptocurrencies do. And it boils down to the, the original idea of transferring originals and not copies without intermediaries from anywhere in the world as long as there's access to internet and with that obviously making many things uh, more secure if fully decentralized and also um, more um, more efficient and again hence here the, our strategy at signum to have an all-in-one account approach encompassing these different types of assets Oftentimes, uh, particularly for maybe those um, ladies and gentlemen that have been active in the traditional banking world, financial sector, it's, it's sometimes uh, difficult to to kind of um, you know uh, manage the the ups and downs and the wild uh, appear uh, seemingly wild west of of of, of crypto, DeFi, and NFTs, etc. But usually, time puts things into perspective, and it's so important. Uh, to, to, as mentioned before, in, in my view, to create a, a long-term vision and to ignore the noise, which is all just the path towards where we will be in the future. If you have such a, a vision, uh, then you can position, position yourself successfully. And I've seen, we've seen it with some of the largest companies that with regards to tokenization, for sure, that they have uh, kind of, um, over time, significantly changed their stance, um, mostly driven by client demand and client expectations. And as a, a wise man or woman, and with that, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you um, and wish you a continued great um, uh, summit, uh, has said, is, is oftentimes the case when it comes to new innovations that first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and ultimately uh, you win. With that, uh, back to you.